Hello, welcome back to From Soft Serve. Today I want to talk about six things I think that'll help you if you're thinking of playing Dark Souls 1 or if you're coming back to playing it uh, and you haven't finished it or you gave up on it because it, it can be a tough game to kind of settle into even if you've played like Elden Ring or DS3 coming back to an older Souls game can be a little tough uh, so these are things that I wish I knew uh, and they're not spoilery so it's not going to ruin your sort of enjoyment of the game it's just really small mechanical things that the game doesn't really tell you uh, that that well uh, and the first thing is equip load uh, and so how it works is that basically if you're under 25 percent uh, of your equip which you can then go to your menu and then toggle and you can go to equip load which right now mine's 32.8 out of 93.6 annoyingly in ds1 this is before they gave you like like an elden ring they'll just tell you if you're at a light roll a mid roll or a or a heavy roll or heavy load or however they would call it because uh, it varies per game but in ds1 if you're below 25 percent you will fast roll which i'll show you that and you can tell you get a very fast, fast roll, hence the name. And you get some more iframes for when people hit you uh, and better stamina regen. I personally recommend fast roll for, at least when I play, I tend to always do fast roll. And then as I up my endurance stat, I can equip more armor. If I get a, you know, a ring or something that would boost that. Uh, then I will start to equip more armor, but I tend to sacrifice the armor because light roll uh, will feel much better for someone coming from like DS3 or Elden Ring uh, or Bloodborne or Sekiro or anything. You'll go, oh my god, okay, I have at least some speed uh, to my roll. And so then if you put on some armor, let's put on the Sun Bro. Oh, I'm still fast rolling. I do have... Uh, couple rings on they're pretty solid let's put on a little bit here so now you can see your your standard walk and running animation changes based upon your equip load so now we're in mid roll territory um, which a lot of people when they start playing the game they they, they think that that's the only role that exists uh, because your character will start like that depending on what class you you pick or they'll start at where they fat roll and they'll go oh my gosh they take off a little bit and they start the mid roll and they go oof that still feels pretty bad because i would say the mid roll feels like a fat roll and from ds3 uh in like elden ring it it's not terrible but it's not great now it's nowhere near as bad as the actual fat roll in this game which is just absolutely atrocious it's so bad that i've never actually finished the game with a fat roll it's so bad that I just can't recommend anyone actually uses that. Let's see if I have... Oh, I probably should just take off. Let me take off the ring. There you go. And so here's the actual uh, fat roll. It's terrible. And so your iframes are less, and it's obviously a way more sluggish. So fast roll is your friend. Right, our next tip is that your standard healing is done through your Estus Flask, which anyone playing uh, the other Souls games will be very familiar with. Um, but you don't have, like in DS2, you had life gems. Uh, and that was kind of a great secondary healing. And in DS3, you have your embers. DS1 uh, actually has, I think, the... I would say the best system. Personally, I prefer uh, the life gems of DS2, but... Uh, DS1 actually does have a backup healing method uh, that is actually stronger than... Actually, yeah, I guess it is stronger than either DS2 or DS3. Uh, and that is done through Humanities. So you can actually... Twin Humanities uh, function the same way because it'll say that it, you gain one Humanity and you greatly restore HP. So normally, you use it to gain a Humanity. The more Humanity you have, your drop rates are better. Um, that's not your like standard way of using it. Usually it's for to gain humanity so then you can reverse your hollowing and become human again. Um, but I tend to put it on my bar and there's been so many occurrences where I've been in a boss battle and I run out of Estus Flask, right? And once you run out of those, uh, let's actually lose some health here uh, to this bomb chucking 
Uh, jabroni. Ow, oh, okay. Alright, you know what? That kind of hurt. Oh my god, ow. Oh my god, oh my god, he totally... Joe Montana over here. Uh, let's go down here, and you can actually pop a humanity. Now, it takes longer than an Estus Flask, uh, but it will regain your entire health. Uh, and so I've found it super useful. I think it was the only reason I bought, or I beat Ornstein and Smo the first time. Um, so, super, super useful. Uh, and honestly, I would, if you have them, uh, I don't recommend popping them like Tic Tacs, but in certain situations, uh, I find it good to at least have it on my bar that if I'm like, oh shit, uh, I can pop them real quick and use that. Next tip is that the way that enemies work in DS1 a little bit different than the other games, uh, specifically different than DS2, where they sort of have like a mob mentality. DS1, actually, they're pretty intelligent, where if you, you know, instead of just bum-rushing into the situation, if you edge forward just a bit, you can actually pull just one of them. Uh, and this is from my World of Warcraft days, where we would call that body pulling, where you just get close enough, you get their aggro, uh, and then they will actually come toward you and the same actually operates for uh, the way that they set this up you can see I've now activated him and then he can come back here this can make the game more manageable uh, if you sort of take a very uh, deliberate approach uh, to the enemies you don't necessarily need to fight 5,000 all at once uh, and that's the key thing that I think a lot of people I've seen who start the game uh, treat it sort of like all the other Souls games, and it's like, no, you, you can actually be very uh, methodical. That won't work in every situation, but commonly you can sort of edge forward and then just pull one of them or two to make it more manageable uh, versus just, you know, fighting around the world uh, and going crazy and dying a lot. Uh, it could save your life quite a bit. The next tip is that so for me personally, when I play Souls games, I generally suck ass at parrying. I'm just really bad at it, specifically in DS3. Uh, I've gotten a lot better at DS2 parrying uh, recently, but DS1's always been the one that I can actually parry in because the window is actually pretty, pretty, pretty large to engage the parry. So I would recommend anyone starting this game from another, uh, like from Elden Ring, for instance, uh, the parry timing is a lot easier, so if you couldn't parry an Elden Ring, I would recommend trying it. Not to mention, one thing that I think uh, the game definitely doesn't tell you, uh, as far as I know, is that you don't actually need a shield to parry. You can actually parry if you have your weapon in your right hand. You can parry just with your hand, which on paper sounds fucking weird, um, but it is true. So let's try on the ultimate parry target the Black Knights. Okay, well I failed at that one. And you can tell it's a pretty sizable uh, parry window. And you don't need any... Okay, see, I failed on that one. Okay, you're gonna be cool now. Yeah, okay, don't ruin my video. And the, the light roll you can see is so useful. Uh, the other thing to do is bait out their attack, and that way you can run away properly. <laughs> And then chuck a motherfucker. Uh, let's see. see, it's very, very generous, this parry timing. And you can parry quite a bit. Uh, where in Elden Ring, you have to be very... Okay, see, but that's what I like about DS1 parry timing, is that it is generous, but if you get cocky, uh, it will destroy you. But it's much easier, uh, in my opinion, than uh, DS2 or DS3 or Elden Ring. So I think it could be really useful for any run uh, that you're doing. Not necessary, you could just dodge roll and uh, you could live purely on dodge rolls and you'd be fine in this game. But parries, I think, uh, are really fun to do in this game and that's something I think anyone should try to add into their gameplay loop. Our next tip is that the, the, the way that jumping works in DS1 is kind of weird, specifically if you come from Obviously, you can't compare it to Elden Ring, as Elden Ring has a dedicated jump, right? But DS3 and DS2 uh, moved to, basically, you click the left thumbstick when you want to jump. Uh, you just have to be sprinting, right? And in DS1, unfortunately, and Bloodborne, I believe, I think Bloodborne is still that way, 
where you have to be sprinting and then you have to hit the same button to jump the same button that you would use to engage your sprint you then have to hit while you're sprinting and holding it down and it's always just really wonky so thankfully dark souls uh remastered specifically uh lets you actually rebind it um, which is delightful uh let's see they're a little weird about it Oh, yeah, you have to go right and... Yeah, okay. Yeah, their menus are a little fucking strange. Uh, you can see here, you can actually rebind the jump to the left thumbstick. And so that way it'll match up to DS2 and DS3. Feels a little bit more modern. It's not going to be Elden Ring level, uh, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I think that'll help people's play through a little bit. Because uh, the, usually the jump is something that uh, is a little wonky. Uh, the other thing, while I'm here, this isn't really big enough to warrant its own, like, number, is that the kick is actually very useful, is you can kick enemies to break their guard if they're blocking or something, and you can't get past their shield easy enough, because usually you can just hit them enough times, it'll break the shield, or break their block that they're doing, um, but the kick, which the game does not explain very well, is you just have to have the thumbstick facing forward, and then hit the you know normal attack button the light attack button at the same exact time so you flick your stick forward and the attack button you hit both of them at the same exact time you might even be able to hear my thumbstick but you flick it forward and the attack button at the same time it's still wonky um, in ds3 you'll end up kicking accidentally all the time it's really weird uh, i don't find that happens in ds1 for me but the kick is something that you should actually get used to doing is it's super, super helpful against black knights with shields and just shielded enemies in general. Our last tip is how you can go down ladders faster. In Demon's Souls, uh, the original, you could not. And you couldn't, you know, like fast climb up either. And it was really just awful. And so in DS1, they did make it better. Um, but I was doing it wrong for a long time and it operates differently from ds2 and ds3 so you get on the ladder and in ds2 and ds3 you basically hold the thumbstick you know down towards the way that you want to go and then hold down the b button at least on my xbox controller and then you'll slide down fast but in ds1 it's not like that um, you actually just tap once the b button or the circle button i guess for playstation controllers if you just tap it once you don't even need to hold it down you will just go down the ladder. And then the same cannot be said for going up quickly up the ladder. I don't really think there is. I thought there was like a quickly climbing up, but really it doesn't seem faster. Um, but literally, I played this game for so long thinking that, huh, maybe it's my controller. Maybe that's why I can't quick slide down ladders. And then I just come to find out that I was just fucking doing it wrong and it didn't operate like DS2 or DS3. And I was like, oh, okay. Because I figured, why? how would it not match up to that? Well, that is exactly why. And I haven't found a way to rebind that to where you would hold the thumbstick down. and Like, this is technically quicker. You just tap it. But I guess for my lizard brain, I was just absolutely not used to it. But So hopefully you found any of these tips, you know, helpful if you're thinking of playing DS1 or if you're currently in a playthrough and you're kind of having a rough go. Uh, these tips should at least make your playthrough a little bit nicer um because the game just doesn't do a great job of explaining the systems in the game it's something they've gotten better at over the years obviously uh, they've been pretty bad at it for a long time uh and so yeah hopefully these help you out uh if you like the video hit the like button comment subscribe uh, i post videos maybe every couple few days maybe a little bit more sometimes uh, and yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.